In this lesson, we're going to prove that the following properties of a parallelogram exist by using a two-column proof. Property number one. In a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. Now let's prove the first theorem using a two-column proof. Given a parallelogram ABCD, we're going to prove that segment AB is congruent to segment BC, segment AD is congruent to segment BC. Statement number one. Parallelogram ABCD. Reason? It's the given. Statement number two. Draw a segment AC. Remember that two points determine a line. Statement number three. Segment AB is parallel to segment CD. And so, segment AD is parallel to segment BC. And the reason for that is, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of opposite sides which are parallel. Since the opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel, and we join two non-consecutive vertices which adjoin point A and C and forms segment AC, we can now say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 2 is also congruent to angle 3. That is because if two parallel lines cut by a transversal, then the alternate interior angles are congruent. For the fifth statement, segment AC is congruent to itself. That is because of the reflexive property. Now we can identify two congruent triangles. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. That is because of the ASA postulate. It says that if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. Then segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Segment AD is also congruent to segment BC. That is because of the CPCTC, or the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Property number two. In a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. Given parallelogram ABCD, we're going to prove that angle ADC is congruent to angle CBA and angle ADC is congruent to angle BCD. Once again, we're going to use a two-column proof. First statement, parallelogram ABCD. Reason for that is the given. Second statement, in this case, we're going to draw two diagonals. So we have segment AC and segment DB. And the reason for that is that two points determine a line. Remember that in a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. Then, segment AB is congruent to segment BC. Segment AD is also congruent to segment BC. That is because of the parallelogram property number one. Statement number four. The diagonals are congruent to themselves. Or we can say that segment AC is congruent to segment AC. Segment DB is also congruent to segment DB because of the reflexive property. Now we can now form two pairs of congruent triangles for statement number 5. Triangle CAD is congruent to triangle ACB. Triangle BCD is congruent to triangle DAB because of the side 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 postulate or the SSS. Postulate. Now we arrive with the final statement. Angle ADC is congruent to angle CBA. Angle ADC is congruent to angle BCD. That is because of the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, or the CPCTC, which implies that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Property number three. In a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. Moving on to property number three. We're going to prove that in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. The first statement is always the given. So let's proceed to statement number two. Segment LI is parallel to segment FE. The reason for that is any two opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Statement number three, angle I and angle F are supplementary. It is because 
If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then same side interior angles are supplementary. Statement number four. Angle I is congruent to angle E. Angle F is congruent to angle L. It implies that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, which is property number two. Now for the last part of the statement, it says that angle I and angle F are supplementary, angle F and angle E are supplementary, angle E and angle L are supplementary, angle L and angle I are also supplementary or in a parallelogram. Any two consecutive angles are supplementary. That is because an angle that is supplementary to one of the two congruent angles is also supplementary to the other. Property number four. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Now in this two-column proof, we're going to prove that the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So given parallelogram EFGH with diagonals EG and FH, we're going to prove that segment EG and segment FH bisect each other. So the first statement, parallelogram EFGH with diagonals segment EG and segment FH is the given. Let's proceed to statement number two. Segment FH is congruent to segment EH. That is because in a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. Statement number three. Angle one is congruent to angle two. That is because they are alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are congruent. Statement number four. Angle FIG is congruent to angle HIE. Reason, the vertical angle theorem. Statement number five, triangle FIG is congruent to triangle HIE because of the SAA theorem. Since we have two congruent triangles, we can say that the corresponding parts of these two congruent triangles are congruent, meaning segment FI is congruent to segment HI and segment EI is also congruent to segment GI. Segment EG and segment FH bisect each other because of the definition of bisectors. Property number 5. A diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Given parallelogram ABCD with diagonal AC, we're going to prove that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA prior to property number 5. It states that a diagonal of a parallelogram divides the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Statement number one, parallelogram ABCD with diagonal AC, which is the given. So let's proceed to statement number two. It states that segment AB is parallel to segment BC and segment BC is parallel to segment AD. The reason for that is the definition of a parallelogram. Statement number three, angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA because they are alternate interior angles. Statement number four, segment AC is congruent to segment AC because of the reflexive property. Statement number five, angle BCA is congruent to angle DAC because they are alternate interior angles which are congruent. Now, for the last part of the statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA because of the ASA postulate or the angle side angle postulate. Let's have an example. Given ABCD is a parallelogram, we're going to find the measure of the following. Number one, find the measure of segment AD. And for number two, we're going to find the measure of angle B. Given that angle B measures 6y plus 5 degrees and angle D measures 8y minus 17 degrees, segment BC measures 5x plus 19 and segment AD measures 7x. Number 1. We're going to find the measure of segment AD. So step number 1. We're going to use the fact that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent, meaning 
segment AD is congruent to segment CB, and therefore, AD is equal to CB. Step number two. We're going to write an equation that represents AD and CB, and that is 7x is equal to 5x plus 19. Step number three. Solve for x. So from 7x is equal to 5x plus 19, we're going to combine like terms or add both sides of the equation by negative 5x. And that gives us 2x is equal to 19. And then multiply both sides of the equation by 1 half. Therefore, x now is equal to 9.5. And for step number 4, we're going to substitute the value of x to segment AD. Remember that segment AD is equal to 7x and the value of x is equal to 9.5. So 7 times 9.5, therefore, the measurement of segment AD is equal to 66.5. Number 2. We're going to find the measurement of angle B. Step number 1. We're going to use the fact that the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. So... Angle B is congruent to angle D, and therefore, measurement of angle B is equal to the measurement of angle D. Let's proceed to step number 2. We're going to write an equation. Angle B is equal to 6y plus 5, and angle D is equal to 8y minus 17. Therefore, the equation is 6y plus 5 is equal to 8y minus 17. Step number 3. We're going to solve for y. From the equation 6y plus 5 is equal to 8y minus 17, we're going to combine like terms. So we have now 6y minus 6y plus 5 plus 17 is equal to 8y minus 6y minus 17 plus 17 so that we can combine like terms. And that gives us 22 is equal to 2y. And then we're going to solve for the value of y by multiplying both sides of the equation by 1 half, and therefore y now is equal to 11. Let's proceed to step number 4. Substitute the value of y to measurement of angle B, which is equal to 6y plus 5. So 6 times 11 plus 5 is equal to 73. Therefore, the measurement of angle B is equal to 73 degrees.